prescription drug take back day is this Saturday. Switch over to part of new Highway 23 expected on Friday. Baldwin's suicide prevention hotline bill becomes law. These stories and more are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. Another Sheboygan County resident in this case, someone 80 or older, has succumbed to a COVID-19 infection, raising the death toll to 21. This comes as both state and county hospitalizations were demonstrating increasing admissions for coronavirus treatment. In the case of Sheboygan County, 26 persons or six more than Friday are hospitalized. 152 more active cases were added to the total that is now 3,616. Only two of those were KMCI inmates, raising their confirmed case counts to 820. 141 more persons recovered and the active list rose eight to the 674 current cases. That topped Friday's previous high number by eight. The negative test count parameters were revised today in order to confirm the methods used by the Wisconsin DPH in calculating positive percentages, whereas Friday's total was 45,634 negative tests. That included multiple tests over the same person and was considered per test. And now that the negative tests will be counted per person so that the same person testing negative three times, for instance, will be counted for. Under the new method, Sheboygan County's negative test total is 27,683 as of Monday, or to put it Another way, 11.6% of those persons ever tested have come back positive. Wisconsin added 3,777 new positive COVID-19 test returns since Sunday, raising the pandemic total to 173,891. With 42,131 total tests received, that positive rate is 8.96%, 8 12 more deaths raise the to death total to 1,600. 165 more persons entered hospitals for treatment of their disease showing Sunday. As of now, 5.4% of all COVID-19 victims have re required hospitalization and 0.9% have died. The seven day percent, percent positive by tests and percent of total daily tests, including repeat tests by an individual is 11.7%. And when calculated by a positive test per person rather than a pure test, it was 21.1%. As of Sunday's data, 1,090 hospitals are occupied by COVID-19 patients and the 284 of those in the ICU, another 142 persons in the hospitals were awaiting their tests returns. According to the date, data from the w Wisconsin Hospital Association in reaction to the recent months that the state's patient was a total was a low as 275 on September 5th. By September 30th, that had more than doubled to 683, and now it is nearly four times that of early September with 1,101 hospitalizations as of this past Friday. Prescription drug take back day that are the prescription drugs that are no longer needed can be a danger to people and if they're not disposed properly, a danger to the environment as well. 
on Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Healthy Sheboygan County 2020, along with the Wisconsin Department of Justice and the Drug Enforcement Administration will hold a prescription drug take back day at the three locations in the county. Generations in Plymouth, the Random Lake Fire Department and St. Nicholas Hospital in Sheboygan. The event will be a drive through and you are asked to wear a mask when you come out. As a volunteer, you will come to your vehicle to collect the meds and any household prescription and over-the-counter medications are, and even pet medications are acceptable, but illegal drugs are not. Also, those using St. Nicholas are asked to enter from Taylor Drive and follow the arrows and follow the arrows as the usual Superior Avenue entrance is closed. Avenue entrance is still under construction. Highway between Sheboygan and Fond du Lac using Highway 23 will likely be using some of the lanes starting on Friday. That started Friday and that the tentative date announced by the DOT Wisconsin, DOT, the long awaited project is an expansion to provide four lanes between Plymouth and Fond du Lac. The traffic will remain two lanes for now as contractors still have plenty of work to do before the completion in the 2022. This week's crews will be installing fumigards, going shoulder work and prepping the pavement markings, installing signs and doing shoulder and landscape work in advance of Friday's anticipated switch over. The UW Green Bay has been recognized as campus pride as one of the best LGBTQ friendly colleges and universities. The list was released Friday as the part of LGBTQ History Month and National Coming Out Day. The list uses an index which I included institutional support and exemplary commitment to the LGBTQ inclusion in policy, program, and practice. The director of the university's Pride Center, Stacy Christian, said students have the opportunity to advocate for policy change, to lead in Pride youth leadership and history campus and to educate about LGBTQ plus important concerns. But most importantly, Christian says that the campus recognizes the importance to continue to grow in its own learning and understand of what the needs of LGBTQ plus individuals are and how to better serve those persons in the community and in the future. A bipartisan bill written by Wisconsin Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin has been signed into the law by Tr President Trump. The National Suicide Hotline Designation Act, which creates a three-digit cord for those in material. Can they see that? The bill designates 988 as the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. In America, we lose 45,000 people every year to suicide, including more than 6,100 veterans, making it one of the leading causes of death in this country, said Senator Baldwin in a press release. We need to do everything we can to prevent suicide and that means improving the tools that we have to help people who are suffering from depression or other mental health concerns. I'm very proud of our bipartisan legislation has finally been signed into law so that we can make it 
as quick and easy as, as possible for Americans in crisis to get the help that they need and the support that they need through the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and Veterans Crisis Line. I urge the Federal Communications Commissions to move ex expeditiously to implement this change and get the 988 up and running. Others who helped Baldwin write the bill included Colorado's Cory Gardner and Jerry Moran of Kansas, both Republicans, Democratic Jack Reed and Rhode Island of Rhode Island also had a hand in this bill. And the measure passed the Senate in May and the House gave their stamp of approval in September. Baldwin notes that 988 will be designated as a national number for suicide prevention. Those seeking help can still call 1-800-273-8255 to be connected to help locally. And finally, in-person early voting begins Tuesday through the state of Wisconsin. Voters who want another voting opportunity besides voting in person on election day or mailing their absentee ballot in the vote absentee in person at the designated location in their municipality. In Green Bay, that is City Hall, and they come down as they can vote. And their ballot is put in an envelope and put in with all the rest of the absentee ballots. Celeste Jeffries, Chief of Staff to Green Bay Mayor, and Eric Genrich explains they are open and counted on Election Day. Jeffries says it is for a good option for working people who need flexibility in their schedule. Wisconsinites are upstanding voters, and our voting turnout is very high here. Jeffries told WTA. Hugh, I expect people will be coming out for in-person absentee voting. Voters should check with their municipalities to find times and dates for the in-person absentee voting. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next time for more news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.